Hello and welcome to Something Rotten Season Max Payne, whatever the hell this season is. We have beat Max Payne 2 colon The Fall of Max Payne. Uh, listeners, I'm going to be very honest with you. I have the hiccups, or at least I did when hitting record. So I, there we go. It might be interrupting our record just a little bit, but fortunately, I'm not the only one talking because this is what we like to refer to as a boys episode. Boys, boys, boys. Because it's boys. just me and Blake in the studio. In the studio. Can you imagine if we yeah, had a our studio? Individual studios. Can you imagine if we had a studio? What do you think it would look like? You think it'd be like a. An... We're moving into the Nebula offices, baby. <laughs> Get out Patrick Willems. We've got to sit there with two mics. Yeah, come on, Dave. Let me in. I'm knocking on the front door every day. Dave, let me in. That's me knocking. Uh, bye, God, Jacob. Uh, my, my partner pointed out I start a lot of episodes by saying, by God, Jacob. Have you noticed this? No, I think maybe you also... I'm, tr- I'm trying to think if you say that in our everyday life. Because maybe I'm just like, well, it's a Blake phrase, so I don't even notice it. I mean, it feels like a particularly Southern thing, and we are two Neil Young Southern men. Uh, I think you should God. go full Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> That's that racist fucking hen. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. Well, I was going to do an impression of what that would sound like, but now I'm scared too. <laughs> I say, I say, I say. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> just just do a little a little Benoit Blanc. You're from much further south than me. That's true. Do you feel like a particular kinship with Foghorn Leghorn that I don't? <laughs> no, because Jesus, these hiccups are gonna kill me. Um, no, I mean I because he's much more. I mean, what is his you know ridiculous version of an exaggerated accent? Because it's not yeah. just like southern hick is it like is it specifically like louisiana i think so which is like here's the thing about the south okay here's the thing about the south if if i may oh sorry on the looney tunes wiki it says he has a central virginia accent okay the south Hmm. is like too big of a distinction because like think about the east coast like it feels pretty small in comparison But, like, you also, you would not can call Virginia Beach the East Coast, even though it's on the East Coast of the United States. I think you would. I wouldn't. I say that I live on the East Coast. Then stop saying you live in the South. Blake. <laughs> what What are we doing here? I'm just, I don't know, man. But, like, the Midwest is, like, Northeast. You know the the Midwest is a baffling uh piece of nomenclature whenever just, whenever people say the midwest i'm like this is this does not make sense i just think like the south is too big of a just disti- like a, a categorization because like i do feel like i have a lot in common with people from like tennessee indiana yeah. well, indiana's more midwest even north carolina like though that part of the south but by the time you're getting to like louisiana and florida and even certain parts of alabama i'm like that's a that's a different fucking place than where i'm from you know what i'm saying yeah i mean florida has always been kind of that hanger on you should just do do what i do and say the former confederacy instead of the south because i think that's a real more specific Mm. you know region that you're delineating i don't know if i want to (laughs) say um blake we are recently doing i don't know if you saw any of this but on min max we're trying to ben wants to do a community meetup and he wants the community to pitch their towns to be like where are we gonna go and we're trying to figure out stuff and he was we were just trying to decide at one point between what was a better pick Asheville North Carolina or Charleston South Carolina as places to go and Ben Ben was saying Charles he was because he was like well we want to have something in the south and like I don't know, is Asheville really? And I'm like, are you saying that because North Carolina has North in it, so it feels less South than South Carolina? And he was like, yeah, that is what Oh, my God, Ben. So Charleston is way more the South than Asheville, uh, at least in former Confederacy terms. Asheville rocks, dude. Uh, I tore my hand open in Asheville. That's... Hell yeah. That's my story about Asheville. Um, You ever been to West Virginia? I've... I've been through it. I've never spent any uh, significant periods of time there. West Virginia rocks, dude. I got to drive through it on my way to and from Louisville and New York. 
And what a hell of a state. I think if I like were to retire and just be like, I'm going to move out, live in a small town. It'd be like an old West Virginia town that they've kind of nestled into the mountains and shit. Mm -hmm. That's actually, uh, that's where Annie's extended family is from. Yeah, I was going to move in with them. Would you believe uh, incredibly conservative? I would believe that. And on that drive, you actually drive under three mountains, which is really crazy. Oh, okay. Let's talk about this, Jacob. We'll get to Max Payne in a little bit. Like, folks at home, we don't have a ton to say about the end of the game. It fucking rocks, but it's kind of more of the same, I'll be honest with you. So we're just kicking it here. Uh, how crazy is it? And I know we've been doing this for like 150, 100, near, probably closer to 200 years at this point, building tunnels through mountains. Yeah. And then putting our little our little transportation apparatus through them. How insane is that? You ever think about this? It is so crazy. And it's like you think about how much like how much headway can you make in a day right. carving through a mountain. Right. And even with an industrial, like enormous, you know, three story mm -hmm. drill. That thing from it's Resident like, Evil Four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that the two guys are driving. Um, even with that, it's like, you know, minuscule. It's like you're going nowhere. And prior to that, it was just guys with pickaxes. I was actually thinking about, uh, in regards to thinking about how um, AI is doing what people's jobs were, but worse and faster. I was thinking about the classic story of uh, John Henry, who was, you know, you mm -hmm. know the like the fable of John Henry, who who was like a railroad uh, guy, and the it was like who can. I can't remember if it was who can dig the tunnel faster or who can lay down railroad tracks faster, but it was him versus, uh, you know, a machine. And he won, and then he died. But, like, th the point was he did it faster. I, I was thinking, I've been thinking, Jacob and me recently, Jacob recently came to New York, and I took him and his partner to uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, where I espoused all my various knowledge about the Brooklyn Bridge. And the It was great. It was Brooklyn really family. just like, we took the cork out of you, and you were just like <laughs> spouting knowledge. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, as you might have noticed, I'm a huge fan of the designer of the Brooklyn Bridge, John Roebling. I recently drove through Cincinnati. I got to see one of his other bridges. I was very excited about it. Uh, but as I've been learning about him and the ways in the, you know, mid to late 18, 1800s, people, not, not even then, just like in general, the way people thought about like architects and designers and engineers back then as these just like <laughs> almost gods, like John Roebling is like, he literally designed a bridge because that that was like very novel right like when they were building something like the Brooklyn Bridge there were just like a lot of people that were like that's gonna fall like it's not going to stand and now like we still kind of have visionary designers like that but they're kind of idiots right it's like Elon Musk's like go build a tunnel under Las Vegas and it's like it's not cool and I kind of miss like I wish there was like man there's that one dude who like built a highway from <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we don't no, really have an equivalent. I, th I think it's that, yeah, it's like the impressive works of architecture today, at scale at least, are like, okay, you got you got a skyscraper. We all know you can make a building really tall. What if it was tall and it was like twisting or it had like yeah. a big hole in the middle or it was kind of curvy? And that's cool. But, uh, you know, a hundred years ago, they were like, here's the thing. I'm going to make a building tall. And everyone was like, we've never seen that before. Can it be done? And so I think it's, yeah, it's like the ground being broken. The new thing would have to be like, we're building a space elevator. You know, it would have to be something that we'd like never seen that type of thing before. But I think there are equivalents. Well, one, they're just, they're, there aren't figureheads in the way there used to be. Like, like engineer, like celebrities, right? At least that I'm yeah. aware of. Uh, but I also think there are equivalents, but they're incredibly stupid or unethical or obviously never going to be built, like uh, the line in Dubai. Right. It's like, mm -hmm. that's stupid. Like, there's no reason for me to ever take that seriously and care about it because it's not going to be more than a big hole in the ground. And it's like, yeah. You, but you read about these dude building bridges and you're like, man, 
crazy ass white boy well, so here's did. here's the question though because it's like we can see when these things are being built it's like you know god i am losing my mind uh the the like dubai is kind of the epicenter of this shit where it's like whenever you hear about like there's going to be a new building and it's going to be a mile high like where is it going to be it's going to dubai. be dubai um How, and we what know funded that it's, what funded its construction don't worry about it yeah and it's like what can what what like uh environment are the construction workers working under don't worry about it but my question is to you reading about the construction of the brooklyn bridge it's like building that was also really bad right like people were constantly yeah, like drowning they... and doing all this shit no well i haven't finished the book but i mean at least in the initial speaking specifically about the brooklyn bridge the initial sinking of the first case on like remarkably i don't think anyone died a lot of people got you know com de com decompression sickness um but i think like they were paid relatively well compared to other construction efforts like it was for the time actually more uh i almost said mundane what's the word of <laughs> humane and ethical and i mean well you want a construction project to be mundane ideally yeah, yeah sure 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 but i mean to your point uh the building most houses back then also was like a fucking a death trap like it's not like it was great but nevertheless yeah um it is, I had, it I had is interesting i had one more thing i wanted to say do you think i'll be able mm -hmm. to I, there are like still cool things being built though i mean you know the particle collider things so sick there's that thing they're building under a mountain in japan that they're gonna fill with water oh so yeah, they yeah where they're they're capturing it's like it's like photons or like you know quarks or something where yeah. it's like they gotta shoot through it and then they like slow down enough that yeah. they can be measured super sick um anyway max Payne, baby what's yeah, up th after <laughs> that was the end of our tom scott video part of the <laughs> part of the podcast now we're time to talk about max Payne. blake you said that this game it ends great you love it can i make a a bold claim here sure this is my least favorite max Payne game and okay. it's not even really a hard decision okay like i i did not think this was a bad game but i didn't i i found the story just okay i did not think it had like the charm of the first game or the kind of crazy production of the third game and also i and and this i don't want you to be upset because you said something very much to the opposite uh last episode i don't like the art style of this game i wow. like i i i don't think it 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 just is kind of it was like a charmless experience for me with ah, exceptions that okay. we'll talk about but like i i didn't really it, it when i was playing it i was like what am i searching for that max Payne one had that this didn't and i was watching a noah caldwell gervais video on the series earlier today um and he described max Payne one as having like a community theater spirit sure and i was like that is kind of what i'm missing in that like Max Payne 3 is full on. It's a blockbuster movie. They're doing stupid things with editing. They have $100 million to work with. Max Payne 1 is like your friends down at the community theater building their own sets, right. uh, making their own costumes. And this is like this weird middle area where it's taking itself very seriously. But I just, I don't feel like it's, pulling it off i see all that um i just think the game's fun as fuck i think it's so much more um on just like a moment to moment basis so much more engaging and fun and effective and what it's trying to do than the first game which i found i mean i played on god mode but like it, like that game is brutal right like which can be tedious yeah. it can be hard to get through and i think max Payne 2 is like you want to feel like you're playing through hard boiled and that game, like you can do it. And all this fucking physics shit going on is going to be crazy. Um, yeah. The story stuff is interesting. I like at some point I kind of checked out, which is not a ringing endorsement of it. I thought it was like well told for what it was. Like it seemed like it had like yeah. a good 
it felt like you could feel a good edit pass had gone over it at some point. Does that make sense? Like they had really thought about like how to deliver this story. Um, I just like I fucked with it. Obviously, a lot of now nostalgia going n- into this. I will also say there was one level I thought was a fucking stinker, and it is that Mona level. It fucking sucks, dude. It is not. Yeah, well, f- no, for Jesus for sure. Christ. But I, I do think so. Yeah, on the on the ga- gameplay point, last episode, I was kind of I had talked about like finding the slow mo weird because I Ew, was trying yeah, to play yeah. it like Max Payne one. <laughs> Where I'd kind of slow down for like a second, pop someone in the head, go back to normal speed. Yeah. And and you specifically were like, that's not how you're supposed to play this. Because it, you know, as I realized, it's like you get more slow-mo for every person yeah. you kill in slow-mo. And it goes slower mo as you're killing people. Like it yeah. continues slowing down. And so I did I did really start vibing with the feel of the levels, which were very different than Max Payne 1, where, like, you could run down an entire staircase in yep. slow motion, and, like, dudes would keep popping up, and you would keep kind of recharging it yep. and slowing down. And that shit did unambiguously rule. And, it like, it was interesting that it took me, like, I had to kind of forget what the first game had taught in order to get on board with that but like once i figured that out i was really digging it yeah i i I approached max Payne 2 mechanically just like so much different than max Payne 1 like max Payne Mm -hmm. 1 i rarely used the like slow down and run around mechanic like it was very often just like i am diving constantly max Payne 2 like at some point halfway through the game i really was not diving very much and i was just like if i saw a combat encounter it was like slow down time immediately and rely on that you know the hourglass mechanic of it's going down kill a guy it goes up it's going down like and um there's obviously all the like visual stimuli that makes that so interesting like the dudes like you shoot them with a nine millimeter bullet and they do like two backflips in the air which is really good um yeah i find it a very fun game um i think here's how i'm feeling about the overall experience because i don't disagree with you and like i i I super understand your feelings and opinions on this game i think where max Payne one felt like remedy like experimenting seeing what can we do within video games what kind of studio do we want to be max Payne two even if it's not like as standout of a game it really feels like remedy honing its chops does that make sense it does it's not as big of a swing but it's like a more refined swing than max Payne one yeah which is it's a really weird thing to talk about with a remedy because they're not actually a studio that i associate with refinement you know they're a studio (laughs) that i associate with taking big swings you know it's like i would not call alan wake 2 or even control like particularly refined you know when it comes to like if you're comparing it to i don't know like a gears of war or something but like what they're doing is just so bananas that you're like i'm okay that like the shotgun feels like it could be dialed in a little bit more and so yeah it is i think you're totally right and it is weird that max Payne 2 feels like a very polished game in that way because it's like yeah that's not that's that's not what i've come to understand remedy as but i think it's an interesting example of like them finding something interesting and really working to figure it out in in a way that we haven't really seen uh in the rest of their you know oeuvre well until, yeah, yeah you know maybe they're they're making control too now is yeah. that confirmed um, yeah, yeah, yeah you know and so i assume control two will be similar to control one and just better uh but maybe it won't be and you know maybe it will be just another kind of alan wake one to alan wake two like big swing sort of sure. thing i mean it's interesting to think like 20 years passed before remedy made another sequel to one of its games to be fair it very publicly uh, did try to make an Alan Wake 2 t- like right. 10 years before it made it but like it never really had 
the earnest chance to make another sequel for like 15 to 20 years after yeah like, it's like two. when they when they finally made a sequel it was literally two console generations removed yeah and so it's like yeah of course it's gonna play really differently like we are in a completely different spot i don't know how particularly interested i am in going on a level by level basis i guess well let's mono... ta- let's talk about that mona level okay um, because that's where we that's where we stopped was the beginning of which I didn't even realize that you were going to have playable Mona in this game, which well, is cool. I think the way I play it, you play as Mona the whole time. No, right. Well, I knew I knew there was one way to have a playable Mona, um, and and her kind of big distinction is it is you know you could imagine a version of this another actually another remedy thing uh, having two protagonists Alan Wake too. Um, but like you could you could picture a version of this game where they play more differently and they really are basically palette swaps except Mona starts with a sniper rifle which is um you know a different gun than Max has access to at least when you stopped and based on Max Payne 1 you might be thinking this is going to be the most fun part of the game because there's the red hook level in Max Payne 1 where you get the sniper and you're riding on the crane. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, but you would be mistaken because this level is fucking dog shit. You have to do an escort mission with Max Payne. And it's yeah, not good. It's, it's really, it's just kind of like I was struggling with, I think it was, there are a lot of things that I thought were ambitious in a cool way about this level. Like it's, it's bigger, which I think is neat. Like, the the combat arenas themselves were actually, like, more complex, which felt like it's like, oh, you can run around more and you can, like, shoot guys from more angles. And that was fun. Um, there is a moment where, so, like, when last we saw Max, the building was exploding and he ran and he, like, jumped out a window and, like, landed on kind of a scaffolding and fell down. And there's a part in Mona's thing where that just happens like in gameplay you're like walking by and you just see max's model jump out the window land on that scaffolding and fall all the way down and i was like that is awesome you know that it didn't they didn't just like play the cutscene again but gave you a new perspective on it and had it kind of like happen in real time um but it is just kind of a sniper escort mission and it's really hard to see like where the guys are coming from and I kept forgetting to quick save, and so I just had to like keep going back to like the beginning of the level. <laughs> Dude, I would quick save while running. I would just be like hitting F five over and over. Like, yeah, I was just going crazy on that thing. Um, uh, I did have a weird feeling where specifically when I was looking down that sniper scope at like a hallway and guys were popping out from either side, I was like, I feel like I'm playing Time Crisis right now. <laughs> like, the way that they kind of rolled and animated, it felt yeah. like I was just playing, like, a light gun game at an arcade, which is not an unpleasant feeling. I love Time Crisis. Should we do a Time Crisis season? We need to, like, go to an arcade. Right, you, you got, like, a movie theater near your house? They always have Time <laughs> Crisis. That The movie theater at my house does not have arcades. Have you ever seen those videos of, like, they're like two player cabinets, but there'll be like one super good guy playing yeah, both sides yeah, at yeah, once. Yeah. The sickest shit in the world. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a there's a couple theaters near my house, uh, but one one is an old United Artists theater, which is really interesting. Which is like a uh, Francis Ford Coppola's old film company that like George oh. Lucas and Scorsese were a part of. It's no longer a United Artists thing, but it still has the sign. Anyway, they have a small arcade in there. I wonder if they have Time Crisis. They do have the Tomb Raider light gun game there are a couple light gun games they talked about on a recent episode of uh i think it was like the patreon blank check episodes but they were talking about how terminator salvation was somehow so sure that it was going to be a huge hit that there are like nine million terminator salvation arcade machines made and so now if you go into like any arcade that has modern machines there's just like a giant terminator salvation booth and i was like yes there there's one of those at my like local barcade just the big stupid terminator salvation Uh, booth. uh friend of the show matt leone is like he's so i mean he's he's older I don't know. I hope he doesn't mind me saying <laughs> he's he's an old man, a grandpa. Uh, so he grew up in arcades and he like still kind of keeps up with like new arcade machines. And occasionally he'll be like, new King Kong cabinet. Not very good. I'm like, all right, man. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate the update. So I, I would love, I need someone to do an investigative piece on like 
what making a new arcade cabinet <sighs> sure. is like because i remember and this is this is like a we're we're really going off base in this episode i but i have like very clear memories of seeing like hydro thunder in an arcade you know which was like that boat racing game and thinking like oh my gosh this the graphics on this are so good because the cabinet is so big you know like they have room for all those graphics in there <laughs> and like one day maybe i'll i'll be able to have a console that will have as good as graphics as hydro thunder and now it's like imagine imagine if you saw an arcade machine that looked as good as like final fantasy 7 remake you would like yeah. lose your mind other than the pachinko games with like you know like the snake eater pachinko thing that yeah. has those beautifully re-rendered cutscenes, well, but it's like they're all pre-rendered they're not they're not actual graphics i mean i'm pretty sure they still will make like street fighter 5 and 6 cabinets where it's That's like true. effectively I, yeah, like sure a ps4 do. just running in a cabinet yeah yeah and like they look crazy like you walk by and you're like oh my god that does look so yeah sick. that is a good that that is like they, they'll make modern fighting games but yeah imagine there's a new king kong cabinet and it's like mind-blowing it's like oh my god have you seen this thing yeah. because it's like technically they could they could put like seven computers in there if it's yeah. the size of a cabinet like hook up all those graphics cards to each other is that how you felt playing hellblade 2 for the first time oh, yeah i mean this is this will come out after embargo. Yes. Uh yeah, that game is uh it feels like you're playing a pre-rendered cutscene. Like it it looks there are there are like pre-rendered scenes in Final Fantasy 7 remake or rebirth where I was like, "Man, the game looks good, but these pre-renders are like unbelievable." And then Hellblade, it like it looks that quality. It's insane. I heard it's shorter than the first game. Is that true? No. Oh, well, I haven't beat it yet. Oh we'll see um okay here here are some things that happen in max Payne. one last time i was like hey what is the fall of max Payne? what are they talking about falls out that building he falls out that building and then he gets shot in the head and he falls again and this he has, man can't uh, stop falling he, he has such a good line the genius of the hole no matter how far you climb back up you can always instantly fall back down great line that's there was a chapter name that i wrote down that's called the secret of the hole no, it's the Which genius is... of the hole. Wait, is it? No, I thought the chapter was named the genius because I know of the he says, I know he says the genius of the hole. No, you're right. Um, secret know. of the hole. I guess I must have been thinking about uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Secret of the Ooze. Listener, I knew I was right. I was just gonna let him find out on his own time. <laughs> I knew I was right. I think it's an interesting choice that when you're controlling mona you still hear max's voiceover yeah but like he's also talking in your like ear piece so you're yes. getting like multiple max like dialogues which is pretty interesting he, he's doing both i i really i found it like entertaining in this how much mona is a character but at the same time, like, the only reason she is around is for Max to realize stuff about himself. And there's a line where Max says, uh, uh, he says basically, um, you know, Sleeping Beauty. Maybe the point of Sleeping Beauty is that the prince kissed her to wake himself up. And I just laughed and I was like, even Sleeping Beauty, Max is just making about himself. Like, the <laughs> yeah, point yeah, is yeah. not the princess, man. It's just for him to kiss this lady and wake up. Um, and so I thought it was like, you know, it, I thought it would have been kind of interesting if you switched to Mona and then she was giving you, you know, like, I had a hole in my second favorite drinking arm or whatever like, kind of lines. But you you stick with Max. Like in Goodfellas, when it switches to the wife's POV. Good stuff. Uh, what do you think is going on with both of them getting a bullet in the head? That's made me my favorite element of the story. Okay, I you know because because last time last time I was like, when are we going to address that she has a bullet in her head? And they leaned into it so much where he was like, is she crazy? because the bullet in her head is like affecting her, you know, yeah. like decision making. And then he gets shot in the head, and they're both. I mean, I it feels it feels like there is this whole element of like 
does free will not exist in this game? You know, are all our decisions, like, made for us? He literally says something, like, I, I should find the line, but he's like, he's like, the only the only place you think you have choices is when you're looking back, thinking about the things you could have done. But even those aren't choices, because if you had made a different decision, then you wouldn't be you. So, like, you never would have made that choice. And so I feel like it is... There is this element where, like, Max and Mona are just two... They are two sides of the same story. They're very similar characters. They're both kind of damaged. They both have a bullet in the head. And it almost just feels like a dice roll or like a coin flip that Mona dies and Max lives. You For know, sure. that that it's just kind of like, well, we're each shot in the head. And, like, the damn randomness in the world is that Max keeps yeah. living and Mona dies. It's kind of interesting thinking, in retrospect, that Max Payne 3 is just like Max Payne 2 kind of not there huh yeah it, 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 they certainly never reference that he has a bullet in his head yeah i mean mona maybe has one line or like one I one line she's... related to yeah. her in max Payne three but like um, it's very much the the wife and child max you know what would be funny is if he went you know there's that mission in max Payne three where he goes to the graveyard and it's it has the graves for his wife and his child there should just be a third one for mona next to it <laughs> or he's like yeah i buried her next to my Fuck wife up. Um, did you know about the alternate ending to this game no if you beat it on hard mona lives really yeah why yeah it's like it's like a different comic book panel and he's like sometimes you get lucky and then he kisses mona and there's like a you know nypd he's like we've got two survivors over here and so they're just like yeah if you beat it on hard mona gets to live that's stupid not it's fan. very dumb <laughs> but I, I did i i was like what is the last game that truly just had like a hard mode completely different ending <laughs> silent hill 2 with the dog that's the last game a game from 2001 silent, silent hill 3 <laughs> um hey, Luke, you ever think about silent <laughs> jacob i'm sorry you ever think about silent hill 2 <laughs> yesterday or not yesterday a couple days ago I just I have Silent Hill two and three just perpetually installed on my computer. Um, not per- perpetually; it's a weird way to say it. I just have them installed. You're on not them. uninstalling them. Um, I just pulled up Silent Hill two, the the remaster thing that they the the fans did, and just like sat and clicked on and watched all the trailers on them. And I was like, man, this is truly the greatest game ever made. You know, just think about it. I I do think about it. Did you did you post that you saw? Nakey Jakey with the with the online ceramic shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, said, living uh, in New York, what a time! It's he's literally and all respect to Nakey Jakey. I love, I love their work. Uh, this is really stretching the definition, but it's my only celebrity sighting in New York. <laughs> was <laughs> Nakey Jakey. I was in Greenpoint having lunch with my beautiful girlfriend Sam, who loves when I mention her on this podcast. Uh, and Nakey Jakey rode by on a city bike, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's Nakey Jakey!" And Sam went, "Who?" <laughs> and I was like, "That's fair." That's you fair. said Jacob's the biggest competitor. The yeah. other twenty-nine-year-old white boy who talks about <laughs> video games named Jacob on YouTube. But then I was like, "Oh yeah, he did just release that video where he talks about moving to New York, um, and he's like sitting on the Brooklyn Bridge." Yeah, yes, that's right. That was insane. I can't believe he did that. That must have been. A nightmare to film. Uh, I love that should... bridge, and I refuse to go up there on it because it's too many uh, people. Neither of us have any connection to him other than uh, Blake having seen him once uh, ride by. Nicky Jakey, come on something, Rod. We My love God, him. yeah, we watch. I watch your videos all the time. The one where he, the the fucking Dark Souls video that he filmed just in bed. Do you remember that one? Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's such a good video. He truly. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, next time I see him on a city bike, I'll be like, first off, get off these city bikes. I hate these things. Second off, uh, I know Jacob Geller. Do you know Jacob Geller? You want to come on our podcast? And he'd be like, please get away from me, you freak. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a there's a very funny line where um, uh, Mona says, uh, there are commandos. They want us to leave. And Max says, I'll go talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> just a great line but then like the most probably the most dramatic scene in the game certainly the most dramatically kind of played with the comic panels is there is the scene 
where Winterson shows up, who's like Max's kind of like police chief boss or whatever. And it is unclear, but it looks like she's about to shoot Mona and Max acts and shoots Winterson instead. And the, the screen is doing this like flash, flash, you know, panels individually showing yeah, it's, up. And it's, it's really it's, good. They're mm-hmm. like centered on the screen and everything. Yeah. Uh, it's really good stuff. Yeah, that was a moment where I was like, here is here is the storytelling pushed much beyond what they were doing in Max Payne 1, um, which I thought was cool. And then Max also gets shot. He falls again. Um, he says, I had a dream of my life in it. I murdered her for my lover, which is a, an interesting line. Um, and then he has another dream sequence. Uh, where do you think their dream sequences in this game Dream sequences in Max Payne 1. Which do you like more? These because the fucking uh, maze is in it. <laughs> they don't have a maze. <laughs> like, it's just, it's it's automatically better because of the lack of the maze. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, they're, they're just able to do more visually with them. And I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, I like what it's doing with the various uh, other Max Payne models. Like, there are, like, yeah. Maxes in jail cells. Or there's, like... A Max you're chasing after at one point. There's a mirrored Max that you ru- that runs toward you. Like it's, I think it's oh, really cool. Yeah, and then you like you shoot him, and it reveals that there's like a mirror between yeah. you or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That that was really cool. I did think I had the thought playing these that these are moving in the direction of what we now kind of know is like the Far Cry Far Cry dream sequence, where it's like, oh, I took drugs and I'm like seeing myself do things. But at the time, uh, Far Cry was not a thing. Um, and and so I think, I don't know when Far Cry 1 came out, but certainly it was not the like, oh, so crazy Far Cry uh, stuff. And so I think now, I think I actually prefer the Max Payne 1 dream sequences just because they're so kind of... Uh, like minimalist in their horror that that just running down these like blank hallways while a baby cries is somewhat unique feeling um but i do think that these are done well and i like the feeling especially there's that like you're running down the hallways and then the ceiling disappears and it's just kind of like red yeah above you it's really uh, good. which feels very um el paso, uh, elsewhere. El paso el- elsewhere exactly um you can see where they're drawn from after the dream sequence uh you wake up in the hospital again kind of where you started in the game uh you don't have a gun i had to look up how to get a gun in oh, this yeah. section. i oh, could yeah. not find it same and even then you have to do like a weird stealth segment uh because what yeah. i thought is i realized that you could knock over guys yeah. by jumping into them and i was like yep. maybe this does a little Same. damage and if i do it a- enough times i can take his gun not the case yeah <laughs> so you just kind of had to run away yeah i watched a 12 year old uh youtube video that showed me how to beat this it was a 120p um, there is this whole section with Woden from the first game, the guy with the kind of like eye patch glasses, where you go, there's the inner circle, there's like a rebellion, uh, kind of thing where like people come in and he's, he's kind of on the outs. This is the part where it's just like this plot. It's just like pouring water into a colander. You know, it's like, I, re- I retain none of it. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep it, keep it real with everyone. Uh, this is the moment I said, I, I'm not paying attention to the story anymore. Uh, I just checked out. Like, it's like honestly, same with the first game. We talked about, like, when these kinds of stories, they escalate to such a, like, it goes all the way to the top type yeah. thing. Like, I'm like, I don't, I don't fucking care. Um, I do think these levels are so fun, though. Just, like, blasting through Woden's Manor. There's, like, 400 dudes in here that you're just fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. going nutso on. Uh, I really liked, but the story, I was like, I'm good. I don't need to do this with this game right now. These levels get hard. They really, they like stop giving you nearly as many painkillers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, did you find that, I felt like the MP5 was just like the best weapon, hands down. Because it has like a scope and it's rapid fire and you can dual wield it. Uh, or maybe you can't dual wield it, but. You can't. Um, I know because. At some point, 
I was just cycling through guns because I never had enough mm, yeah, ammo yeah. that it'd be like, okay, I used the MP5. Now I'm switching to the Ingrams. Now I'm switching to the the AK-47 thing. Like I was constantly just going through guns. I'd be like, the game is making decisions for me at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, I thought the guns, they were all fine. Like using, using the dual Ingrams is always really fun kind of coming around. It is like... It's fun how fast you run out of ammo, but for those, like, five seconds that you can just hold down the trigger, you can just, like, take out an entire did room. You, did you did you get a little nuts with the grenades in this game? No. Poo, brother. So there are numerous times in this game, especially in the back half, where there would be, like, waves of guys that come or, like... A fucking van will bust in and a bunch of dudes will pop out the back of it oh i did a little bit yeah you you plop one grenade down go into slow-mo and those dudes it looks like a firework of them mm-hmm. flying away it's so good i had so much fun doing that in these levels where there's just so many fucking dudes uh i have written down here uh accidentally killed a homeless guy watching dick justice <sighs> i did the so same bad thing. about that i did the same um, thing jacob i i also killed that man Here's here's a note that I have because I was watching more TV because uh, last week with Tim you're like you're missing the remedy because you're not watching the TV shows which I think is largely true but also another thing that feels to me kind of unremedy and very rock star about this game is that there's a lot of like porn in this game or like porn adjacent stuff and there's not really a joke other than it is sex you know like there's there's like a tv that's playing like a sex you know basically because it's just a slideshow of images it's basically just like a sex line and i kept waiting for like what's the joke gonna be and there's not one it's just like isn't a woman moaning funny like isn't isn't that like a weird thing to be in the game and i as I, it left kind of a bad taste in my mouth that's fair and i'm gonna switch topics just slightly but I, I understand the name Max Payne. What do you think's going on with the name Mona Sax? Do you think like oh, I'm thinking a... too much about the moan in Mona? No, because it sounds like it's saying Mona Sex. Like that's what her name sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Obviously, her her sister is Lisa, so that's something. Lisa Simpson. No, Mona Lisa. Oh yeah, no Lisa Simpson. Mona Lisa. <laughs> that's actually so shitty that sucks <laughs> fuck this game fuck remedy that's <laughs> awful that's oh they out kojima to kojima on that one <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a real die hard man lisa um <sighs> yeah i don't know it's like sax is like well there are saxophones in noir Jazz, but, baby, but, New York, New York. Yeah, really, I feel like the her name is supposed to be Mona Sex. Like, yeah. that's, that's what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a mission where you enter a kind of gang war in a, in a sequence that feels more ambitious than it is good where you get you get four kind of like forget about it you know italian guys i had to kill them (laughs) so they come out and they help you but if you stray a bullet even close to them they all immediately turn on you and so i have no idea how you'd get through this section not just killing them all eventually Dude, yeah it's like mike the cowboy and the cleaner boss where it's like w- 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 they're dead like what's the point of yeah. these guys also they... the the game stopped doing those intro they i think that they just kind of ran out of new characters it also introduces like fully animated cutscenes in the back half occasion did you notice that there would just be like yeah. oh you would have done this in the comic book it's a there's some weird budget stuff i think going on in the back half of this game right but wouldn't I assume that the comic book stuff would be cheaper than a fully animated cutscene. Like that's why they did it. In I don't know. One. I don't know. They feel shittier to me. They when, do feel cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Like they don't look good when it does it, and it starts to do it increasingly in the back half of this game. Yeah, I I agree. It was a it was this kind of strange thing. Um, there is a okay. There is a there is a kind of concept level here that I was like, this is funny and weird even if i don't like playing it which is of course the baseball bat boy level where you meet 
some dipshit in a He's baseball bat in the game. costume. Okay, you you meet a dipshit that you've met before uh, in in an enormous baseball bat boy costume where it's like his head is like the width of a door um in a very specific way that i'll reference again later um and there's a bomb in his head so he can't take it off and so you're escorting him through this i actually think the level's kind of interesting because it's like it's a very defined space where it's just kind of like a warehouse and there's an apartment above it and so you go like through the warehouse and then up to the apartment and then back down to the warehouse and then like you know through you're you're kind of just like looping through this but you basically have to clear out guys and then big old baseball bat boy like you know flip flops his way over to the next place and kind of yells at you to protect him and at some point you go upstairs and he has an entire apartment full of baseball bat boy merchandise which did kind of very work for funny me. i was like that's funny <laughs> i um i was uh not a fan of this level and its works but i did quite like um sorry i did quite like his head getting stuck in the door that was very funny and it makes a little squeaky sound well so i almost i almost like locked myself out of the rest of the game here because there was a section where he was just supposed to walk through a door and he could not fit and it was like his pathing was taking him through that and i looked it up and it was like people There was a very funny solution that I couldn't get to work where you actually just slammed the door on him and eventually it would, like, push him through. But mine was... I think my game was, like, running at too high a frame rate and that somehow, like, screwed him up. And so I had to, like... I had to basically, like, turn down the settings and then he could make its way through. But I was like, this is so frustrating because it looks like it's happening for real. Like, it looks like the actual mascot just can't get through this door, but I can tell he's supposed to. Um, Then eventually he just does blow up. It's like yeah, you do it's, that it's whole pretty, thing, and then they just blow up his head. It, it's pretty gory for yeah. compared to the rest of this game. It's kind of gnarly. Um, There's a sequence where you go back to the fun house and you fight a bunch of guys in it, they're having a lot of fun with the physics here, which I really liked. There's a part where this big, like, rolling pin just falls down and is, like, rolling towards you and you kind of run out of the way. There's another funny bit where, like, in the fun house, there's, like, there's a stack of crates that looks like it's going to fall over but then doesn't. And you can trigger that and then, like, scare the guys who are there. They're like, oh, I thought that was going to fall on me. And you can shoot them. It's fine. Um. Oh, I actually, this it was at this point in the game that I was reminded of one of my favorite bits, which is, did you ever watch the the Onions, like, the Onion News Network? They had, like, a YouTube channel. No. I know what you're talking about, but no, I did not. They had a article, or it was, it was a video from, like, probably 15 years ago uh, that the headline was... New hit video game consists solely of shooting people close range in the head. Where it was like, it was like a video of this fake video game where like people's heads would just appear on the screen and you would shoot them and their head would explode and then it would, you know, go to the next one. And, and then they were interviewing these players and they were like, it was like, players say that it's the deep and compelling story that drives them through this. And the guy was like, you really feel like you're in the shoes of, you know, the main character who's forced to shoot hundreds of people <laughs> close range in the head. But what I realized just playing this is that, like, it was using comic book cutscenes in the style of Max Payne, where I really feel like <laughs> yeah. it was specifically a Max Payne 2 joke. Because when I was at this point in the game, I was just like... I have just shot so many people close range in the head. Are there any games that are kind of like that? I mean, super hot, but that's pretty abstracted. Um, I mean, I feel like there are Flash games that are like that. Yeah. Yes, this is uh, from April 6, 2009. Wow. Hot new video game consists solely of shooting people point blank in the face. And it is, uh, <laughs> it is hilariously gory. Wow. That's good. Love stuff. the onion. There's some stuff that I like here. There's an interesting or another Max dream sequence where he says, in the dream, I was a ghost hovering outside my body, which 
as a description of what a third person yep. game is so good. is really so cool good. really really good moment yeah uh that stuck out to me it, i like the uh subtlety compared to the video game thing in the first one yes yeah um there's also it's another like dream max kind of running through there's a section where you and Dream Max are just shooting at each other, and Dream Max just keeps saying, I've been framed. And it's like, that is funny, because basically if you had to boil down Max Payne to a single action in line, it would be him trying to shoot you in the head and saying, I've been framed. Like, that is, like, the encapsulation in, of his character. This is something I was thinking about a lot in this, this the last parts of this game. is, In the episodes about Max Payne 1, you were wondering if in some of the dream sequence stuff, the game was trying to say more about Max and his wife's relationship, whether there was yeah, yeah. You know, an abuse element there. And the game doubles down on Max's guilt. Max Payne 2 yes. doubles down on Max's guilt and the way he seems to think he is responsible for his wife's murder in a quite literal way. Not just like, I wasn't home, like in a like, I killed her type way. And yeah. You know, obviously this is the game is doing a lot with delusions at this point. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, like, were you were you thinking about that again? Kind of. In this case, I felt like part of the guilt was also him feeling romantically towards Mona. And so feeling, you know, then, like, more guilt about, like, potentially betraying his wife by, like, being in love with someone else. I think that is one of the more interesting aspects of this game's story. And mm -hmm. maybe even, like, one of the more mature, like, examinations of, like, love in games is, like, Max's guilt over having feelings after his wife's death is, like, a very interesting concept. Yeah, and I think it's, it's explored in this game in a fairly specific way that I don't think is bad, but I also think it's, like, it is a very Max Payne-y thing where, like, for sure, he for is sure. attract he's attracted to Mona because she is like him in that she kind of has no emotions other than, like, I need to kill a bunch of people. You know, and that's why they fit together. And that's why they're, you know, it's an interesting, like, noir pairing. Because they're both these, just, like, totally broken people whose attraction to each other is just solely based on, like, hey, you're also kind of a sociopath. Um, but it is, you know, it's not, it's not addressing the kind of larger issue of, like, Hey, what if if you're a widower and fall in love again? How are you supposed to feel? Because this is so centered on both of their just like bananas life circumstances. Sure. But it, like I do like the the conceit of it. I think it's an interesting pitch. Yeah, well, and we'll talk about the last line of the game, which I actually think is a fucking home run. One thing that I think is cool about uh, the end of this game is you're fighting alongside Mona or you're like you're fighting and then you see her like across hallways and she's also fighting. And I think it's cool how uh, good she is that like you know you don't it, it for whatever reason sometimes when video game npcs are programmed to fight it just like doesn't work you know and even if the game makes them invincible they're not actually capable of killing enemies and i think it's fun in this game that she runs through as the same kind of freight train as max where she's just like dudes are dying left and right i mean what's interesting is like the moments in this level where, like, I was like, oh, I'm going to back Mona up. And, like, she had just cleared every dude before yep. I, my bullet could even get to them. Um, Yeah, and so eventually... So it turns out the big bad of this game is Vlad, who... Whatever, you know, the the Russian guy. Um, There is... um Vlad, eventually, you have a confrontation. He kills Woden, uh, and he shoots Mona uh, in, in a move that will turn out to be fatal. Um... And then you have a pretty similar boss fight to the first game where you don't actually, I, I mean, it's kind of interesting in that both of these games are like, okay, I don't want to have a guy that can just get shot a hundred times. So how do you do a boss fight? And both times they've come to like, I guess you just have to shoot part of the environment to make him fall down. Um, and so in this, he's standing on this big... <laughs> I really hope that these is, this is not how these things are built in real life. He's standing on, like, a big kind of glass ceiling, 
and you're just shooting out these little rods that are holding it up, and it's almost like you're pushing them out like they're Django or Jenga pieces. Nah, it happens all the time here. Just like, <laughs> all the time, it just happens. Uh, and then you you shoot them all, and he falls down. He falls through the ceiling and he hits the ground. He dies in front of a giant like painting of Adam and Eve. Where I was like, what is the symbolism of this? It was very like pointed, and I was like, I don't, I. At Max and Mona or Adam and Eve? I don't know what I this is. I didn't even is. clock that. Holy shit. Yeah, I missed that completely. Um, yeah, so then um, he goes to Mona. Uh, she's dying, um, which which kind of seemed seemed like is where the story was going to end the whole time. Um, Max feels reborn because he sees himself in Mona being dead, I guess. You know, another another aspect of... Max using dead women to kind of further his own character development, but it also makes sense in terms of, like, they are functionally the same character, and so he gets to, like, witness his own death and then find some sort of uh, uh, consolation in that. But the the last line, which is just this, you know, just kind of a piece of Sam-like writing, uh, is, I had a dream of my wife. She was dead, but it was all right. It's like when that did yep. it, I was like, man, I did not like the story of this game, but like, wow, yep. that is that's a good last line. And then uh, Max Payne three comes around, and it wasn't all right anymore. He was still anyway. Sad, he was sad. not all right, yeah, definitively was, not all right. Still, still pretty sad about it. Um, and then in the credits, there is a song by Poets of the Fall. Oh wow! I skipped the um, credits. And uh, it's it's very funny because it says you know final song, uh, poets of the fall, and then it says based on a poem by Sam Lake. <laughs> I thought hell yeah. Does that means Sam is the poet of the fall. He is the poet and he, the fall of uh, Sam Lake. The fall of Max, Max oh, Payne too. Oh, there we go. Um, there you go. That's Max Payne. What 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 do you think about that last line? Other than it being good. I think is there it's like good. analysis we should do on it. I think it's. It's it, it well what uh, I mean yeah it, it's a good line what else are you gonna do right like it can't end bad <laughs> like Max has to find some solace I think there's like an unfortunate element of Max Payne three just be like nah <laughs> he wasn't all right actually he was so much worse in the ensuing ten years um I don't know. It's there's an abruptness to the ending that I think didn't sit super well with me where it's like I do really like the line, but it feels like it's just missing something. I, yeah, well, I guess I what I like about it is how not final it is like a kind of what a sure what a nothing observation that is in that it's like it's not like Max is like. And I visited her grave, and for the first time in years, I felt at peace. Right. You know, it, it is this kind of ambiguous, like, so you had a dream that she was dead, and in the dream it was all right? Or it's, you feel all right that you had that dream, or whatever? Like, it's, it's very open to interpretation. But I like how, even though I do think this game is stronger without the existence of Max Payne 3, I do like it that it's not, like my life is solved but like very right. temporarily i am able to have i'm able to think about my dead wife and not feel like my world is ending for sure do you feel like your appreciation of remedy video games noir as a genre has been enriched by finally playing these two games i think I mean, certainly my appreciation of Remedy. You know, I love I love seeing where they've come from. And video games as well, just because, like, these are these are games that you can see. You can see the lines stretching from them into games in the future. Both Remedy and just third-person action games in general. Games that use slow motion. You know, all of, we both love Vanquish. Vanquish is a big slow-motion action shooter, I'm sure. Good game. I'm sure they played Max Payne. Um, you know, in terms of in terms of noir, I I think that Max Payne one is generally a kind of amateurish but really loving tribute to the genre, and Max Payne two's 
somewhat like self seriousness means that I don't I don't actually think it works as like a contribution to noir quite as well because Max Payne two I feel like is just outdone by a noir novel you know or a, or a movie because it's trying so closely to emulate them whereas Max Payne one is like silly enough that I think it it's kind of doing something on its own but you know like I I still. I like the character of Max. I don't think that he's ill-served by this game. You know, so it's not like... It's not like Max Payne 2 made him do things that have, like, you know, hurt my my love of the franchise. For sure. I think, um... I think I just feel relieved that I still love these games. So and and that's... Much. I was honestly more invested in that than my own enjoyment. So I'm... I am also glad that you have these these games that meant a lot to you as a as a youth uh, that still work. I have a question about broader something rotten based on this season. Because in some ways, playing Max Payne 1 and 2 was, hey, we, we got, got to do some completion. Here. Yeah, full circle. What are some other series we maybe need to go check some boxes on? And this is, by no means, this is not hinting at future seasons. I'm springing this on Jacob now. But, like, what are some do things you, where it's Do like, you mean, like, we've started and we need to finish? Or, or just, like, like played, they're, like, homework? Or, like, right, like, we've played a couple games in a series. Do we need to go do another season where we add the rest of the games? Um, I mean, eventually we will probably come back to Call of Duty. Yeah. Because it is, it is a very prominent series. Uh, the theme song I wrote was so good. <laughs> it really was. Um, I think that doing some of the Devil May Cry games would be neat, other than DMC. Oh, yeah. I forgot we did DMC. <laughs> you know, probably probably DMC 2 is the most rotten one, uh, yeah. which I don't really have any desire to play, but like would be kind of interesting. And I've never played DMC 1. Um, I started at 3. Um, so like maybe it'd be fun to go back to those dmc3 is is probably it's it's a very silly game but we could probably work it into being rotten um i don't know did you have anything in mind for this i mean the obvious one i mean silent hills the right? obvious one to me is silent hill 4 um but also silent hill 1 right yeah i, I know you don't want to play it but like people like that game and i know i i've seen some of the cutscenes in it are like bonkers yeah yeah, the Silent Hill ones seem pretty obvious. I mean, like, I don't think we need to play No More Heroes 2 or 3, but, like, maybe there's pseudo stuff we should yeah. do. I don't know. I, I mean, it's, it's like, like, I'm, like, I'm I, really curious about No More Heroes 2 and 3, but I just don't know if I'm curious enough to commit to playing them. Yeah. It, um, yeah, I, I don't know. The, the idea of, like, revisiting a series as part of a season is like kind of interesting to me to be like, Oh, this is go. a dumb did, did pseudo work on. He was, he, he was one of the directors of lollipop chainsaw, right? Yeah, him, and it James was him, Gunn. And, him and James Gunn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. T Tomo Akita is the other person listed who I don't know who he is other than the guy who partially directed lollipop chainsaw. And you know, some of those games are like, it's like, I wish I could have an abridged version of it. Because I bet that you could kind of get what Lollipop Chainsaw is doing without actually having to play through that whole uh, I mean, it would be, it'd be interesting to do, like, a Siren series, you know? Oh, like, sure. I mean, is that continuing anything? Or is that just, like, a cool game? Well, I mean, after Toyama. When Toyama oh, left right, sure. after Silent Hill, he directed Siren, which is, like, very yeah. much the same DNA. Yeah, um, get get Eurothug and uh, Tango Mushi back on the podcast. Yeah, just have them host a season. And we take a <laughs> few months off. <laughs> That'd be great. Do a way better job than us. those games. Siren One seems inscrutable. I want to play those games so bad, but Siren One, I'm just like, fuck. I don't know if I can do all that shit. Well, I've always wanted to play. I've never played any of the Fatal Frames, which yeah. has always been a game that I've wanted to try. You know, the the director of those games like claims he can actually see ghosts, like very famously. He is always. I like, believe it. Why not? One of my like dream articles, and we we tried to do this at GI for so long, 
was uh, me going ghost hunting with him. I mean, ghost hunting is like a reductive way to, but it's like a personal part of his experience. We were not going to go be yeah. like, you know, ooh, oogie boogie boogie spooky. Did you have like a ghost us, detector? And no, like, like we're not going to, it was going to be more sensitive to that. Like, but like we wanted to be like, because I'm very scared of like dying. And so that was the pitch is like, I want to see our ghosts real. Like, because then I, I would be like, oh, is there an afterlife? It was a whole thing. And like, they were interested in it and the timing just didn't work out. So maybe one day. But that um, is he supposedly really cool. supposedly can see ghosts. It's crazy. Shit. Um, well, I think that's the end of our Max Payne 2 podcast. Uh, people stick around for the Nebula special this month where we will be watching Max Payne, the movie, the uh, Marky Mark and uh, uh, <laughs> what's her what's her name? Mila Kunis. Mila Kunis. Uh, as as Max Payne and Mona Sachs, along with the oft mentioned but it hasn't been a guest since the very first season. AJ Moser will be joining us My roommate, on that yeah. episode. He, uh, uh, he came into our apartment the other day holding a library DVD of Max Payne. The, like, the only way to watch. I should see if my library has yeah. a DVD of it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, other than that, we'll be doing questions. Send in your questions to something we're on podcast at gmail.com. We actually don't say that very much. Um, but okay. we'll, we get we'll a talk lot about of questions. Those. We get a shit ton of those things. We could actually yeah. stand to say it a little less, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, and uh, until then, for Blake Hester, my name is Jacob Geller. We just played Max Payne 2. And I had a dream of my wife. She was fine, because I live a happy life, and I'm not Max Payne. I'm not going to say my wife was dead. Bye, everyone. You also aren't married. Bye. Bye.